Yo guys, we have the first Thailand long tail diesel riverboat here on US waters. We just wrapped up three days of some epic shooting with this thing, but you're not gonna believe what happened to it and you're gonna have to stick around till the end to see it. So let's get started with some long tail riverboat action. It's got a cold Dr. Pepper in my hand. It's time to rip this thing on United States waters. That is the storm that you do not mess with. I'm afraid of this thing. Like it's this isn't good. I'm kind of at this standpoint right now where either I can continue to test and continue to break things, or we can just go full send with the video, and that's what we've done. We just kind of went for it. You know, the team showed up and brought their crew out with their cameras and I was gonna go all in for this video. I was like, you know, I know there's people waiting like kind of all over the world to see this boat rip on the United States because it is the first one. Your uncle did not have one, right? <laughs> I shouldn't say that. A little over a year ago, I found myself scrolling on social media and came across these long wooden boats with giant diesel engines on the back. And I just had a desire to figure out how I can get my hands on one or even just drive one. And so, the story goes, I've, I started posting on Instagram looking for somebody that could speak Thai and also was kind of involved in the boat world. And so I was reached out to by a guy named Will. And Will lives in Thailand and he operates a marina that he owns. And I kind of explained to him like, hey man, I know I've seen these boats out running out there. Do you know anything about them? And he didn't. And so he started going to some of the local events. He literally met this guy named Bird who was a hole builder and Bird got in touch with the engine builder and we put together this package to build this boat. And a lot of people have questions about how much it costs. Well, the boat was $12,000 with the engine. And since then, things have astronomically gone up in price. And I don't think I have any influence on that, but they're very sought after and they're handcrafted. I mean, these boats take six months to build just the hole. And so we got the process going. I sent the money over and it was on a whim. You know, I was sitting there on the couch with my wife and I'm like, I'm about to wire this money to this guy I've never met in my life from the complete opposite side of the world and she was telling me don't do it and you know as guys were sitting there on their computers like I'm gonna do it well I did it and uh, we started getting pictures of the hole being built and uh, just booked our flights we went through over Thanksgiving last year and we took delivery of the boat we met up at will at his marina in Thailand and uh, the engine builder came out and the hole builder came out and both their teams and we ran the boat a bunch and it was absolutely epic my expectations were nothing i didn't know what to expect i will say these things are way harder to drive than i expected them to do and i'm still learning i mean i've only driven the boat a handful of times in the united states and there's been a few things that we changed once we got the the boat and we drove it in thailand it was the next piece of the puzzle was figuring out how we're going to get this thing home and so my cousin is a broker in chicago madeline edwards and she arranged a 40 foot container for the hole to come over. Now the engine wasn't allowed to come over one piece because according to the EPA, a modified diesel engine, not be allowed to come into the United States. And so we disassembled the engine and sent it over in parts. Uh, we had to acquire some parts here locally to make the engine legal and then reassemble it. And at that time, the, the hole had gotten here in April. We put the engine on the boat and then I started upgrading a few things like putting an Americanized battery system on it, 12 volt, low voltage stuff and then you know fuel filters and you know catch cans and kind of adding my personal touches to the boat that I didn't get to in Thailand because it was kind of like I send my money and then I just kind of show up. I had a few things to pick like what color accessories I wanted on the engine and what color the upholstery but I didn't know how long it was. I didn't know the power it was going to make. 
I didn't know it was gonna be compound turbo versus like a single turbo setup. They just kind of picked it all for me. I just told them I wanted the longest, biggest, smokiest diesel long tail we could get, and that's what they made happen. So what makes my Thailand Riverboat the first in the United States is that I understand somebody has brought in one over, but it has like a small gas, like weed eater engine on the back. And I've seen those, and there's other like fiberglass models and aluminum models that people make here stateside. But what makes mine special is that it was handcrafted out of teak in Thailand, and the engine as well is from Thailand out of an Isuzu D-Max truck. So that's what makes this particular boat one of a kind and the first one to ever come to the United States. There's a lot of claims out there that your uncle or your grandfather or someone in between has already had one of these in the United States, but not a single person has been able to show proof. There's one wooden boat from Thailand that I've seen that was in like Minnesota, but it had like a dinky little weed eater engine on the back. And so I'm still claiming this is the first diesel Thailand long tail to ever come to the United States. And it's pretty exciting. We're just literally a matter of days before we can get this thing in the water. And I have a bunch of stuff planned for it, but if you have proof, I highly doubt that you beat me to the punch because I believe this is the first one. No one's been able to show me otherwise. So bring it on. Well, that went a lot smoother than I expected it to go. I'm not gonna lie. Man. I guess the only thing to do now is to get to work, right? Is to get to work? It's what it's all about. Right. Now it's in there. Now get to work. Time. We got. That's hookup time. And it's hookup time. We gotta stack another turbo. We gotta run all the wiring. We gotta run fuel lines, coolant lines, water lines, all the lines, and uh, then she'll be ready to turn over. Hopefully within a day or two, right? Man. That is an exciting time. It wow. is. It is. It's a neat piece, isn't it? And did you show the front of that thing? I mean, that is a beautiful uh, yeah, piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a beautiful piece of equipment. Look at that. There she is. All the green. Pretty cool. Man, it's done up right. Yes, it is. I mean to tell you, it's done up right. Thanks for helping me out on a Saturday. I didn't do anything on it. You headed up and put it up right down in there. All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the JH Diesel YouTube channel. And today we're here working on my East Asia diesel engine. And uh, looks like you got a computer. I do. The desk job's paying off. I do. My brother JH, he uh, hooked his computer up to this thing and he was able to figure out the issue. You wanna tell us a little bit about what you're showing here? Yeah, basically uh, we pull up data. We gotta turn the key back on. Yeah, pull gear on. Oh. Oh, I see. This one's on. So basically we pulled it up and uh, I was looking through everything and obviously this is completely aftermarket like you can't go by factory specs on this thing really other than a few things, fuel pressure uh it's key and then boost you can still read boost other than that that's pretty much about the only thing on this thing from what i can see is really going to be accurate and uh engine temp and stuff like that so going through there i'm watching it this thing's idling like crazy it's not doing anything correctly and it's calling for 4,000 pounds of fuel pressure at idle and it's reading zero it's reading no fuel pressure at idle so i had him unplug the fuel rail pressure sensor which is right here and then plug it back in when he unplugs it it ramps up to 35,000 pounds and then basically that tells me there's something wrong with this connector or something in the sensor the wire or something so he plugs it back in and halfway what you halfway plugged it back in yeah right? halfway plugged it back in and started and working again it's reading correctly now it's idling correctly which it was not doing that before um these systems are fairly simple you have low pressure system, feeds a high pressure pump, and this pump can feed anywhere up to 30,000 PSI. This is the fuel pressure regulator on the back of the pump, or some people call it a fuel control actuator. That's what actuates how much fuel goes in the rail system. Okay. There's your rail. And then here's a fuel pressure sensor. And there's your fuel pressure sensor, and those go straight into the injectors. So it's a pretty simple system. Yeah. And uh, yeah, once you start it up, we're able to see Let's we'll start it up. Pressure. Well, let's show them what it shouldn't look like first. Yeah, let's see what it should look like. So if we plug this sensor in all the way, it starts like having a choppy idle. Well, well now it sounds okay. Now it sounds fine. Of course. So Once you get now the video. reading correctly. Yeah. So basically, 
That's what it's asking for, and that's what it actually has. Okay, but then when we kind of start playing with these wires here, or even back the sensor out halfway, now you're getting now your, it's reading okay. That's your desire, that's your action. So if we rev her up. It caught back out. It caught back out. Well, that would explain it. Well, dude, everyone was saying to come here. I'm glad I did. What's the, just, just send me an invoice, all right? Yeah, yeah, I got you, bud. What is don't it, worry. like net 90 on that? Yeah, don't worry about it, man. We'll just, <laughs> hey, we'll work it out, don't worry. We'll work it out. I'm definitely gonna owe you like a tooth or something down the get, road. You better get rid of your Raptor R, because that's really about what it's gonna be. <laughs> hey man, appreciate your time, JH. I know you're a busy guy, but if you guys have any diesel questions, I'm gonna put his cell phone number right here and you can text him whenever you want. <laughs> I really appreciate that. <laughs> All right, guys, as you've seen in the previous videos, we have major hole damage. This thing has been sitting in the heat and out of the water. And I understand that once this wood dries out a little bit, it's going to crack. I mean, it is a wooden ship by all means. It is going to crack over time and it's going to get holes in it. But the one that we have has been allowing way more water than what is comfortable. Within a matter of minutes, we have inches of water in the boat. And we do have a bilge pump that is present underneath the engine that I put in, but you know, we want to fix these holes so that it's not a problem and it doesn't become worse. So Kyle and I are here at the shop and we've got some epoxy. There's probably 150 comments on how to fix the cracks and everybody's opinion is a little bit different, but we have decided to go the epoxy route. Kyle has experience working on boats and fiberglass and wood and all things of sort. And so he sent me down this road to order some special epoxy that we're gonna mix and show to you today and uh, get some of these cracks filled in so that we're not taking on water when we do run the boat because we are very close to ripping this thing. So we're gonna be locating all the cracks and just trying to fix them up. We're gonna clean them out and we're using epoxy because epoxy gets a really good uh, molecular chemical bond so you don't have to do as much prep work as you would with like GP resin or vinyl ester or polyester. All right, we've identified our main crack as this one being here. And this crack wasn't too bad when we didn't have the engine in it. But once we put the engine in, there's just so much weight in the boat that there was constantly water pouring in through here. And it doesn't seem like it's very big, but I'm telling you right now that this crack is big enough so that when the boat's been in the water for a couple minutes, we literally get inches of water sitting in the back here. So what Kyle started to do already is he's began to sand this and kind of pick it open with a razor blade. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, we're not gonna be able to get a 100% seal on this thing, but anything's better than where it sits right now. Um, I obviously have some wiring left to do on this boat, and so that's why you see all these wires sitting here, but that's okay. We really don't need a lot of these wires. Uh, the boat is functional as it sits right now. I still have a lot of odds and ends to do on it, but if we're gonna run this thing shortly, this is gonna be the most important piece to get it going is getting this one crack filled right here. Now I wasn't able to identify much more than this one, but this is the main cause here. stops here. All right, we've identified the crack. It ends about right here and comes all the way forward about four feet to this mark right here. And so in order to get this crack to stop, we're gonna drill a small hole here and drill a small hole there to stop the crack. We've already sanded it and hit it with some acetone, cleaned it up a little bit, and then we're gonna kind of dig it out with this razor blade but uh, we're gonna stop the crack from growing by drilling a hole on either side right now. Just over that one there. There we go. That's good. Uh -huh. And then start mixing it up. Yeah. And we should be wearing masks right now. Yeah. Technically. Don't show my mom this video. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty much what we're looking for right there. Yeah, like a brownie Once it batter. stops, yeah, once it stops uh, like melting and, and moving, dripping down, 
we know that once we get it into the void that it'll stay put and solid and all gonna like run out. So. Yeah. All right, it's time to fill my cracks. <laughs> We've got them cleaned up and taped off. Kyle's got his putty ready. Let's hit it, dude. All right. Now we're just gonna start. Now that is satisfying right squeegeeing there. Squeegeeing it in for a while. That is satisfying. The only downside to where this crack is, is we can't see it visually from the outside of the hole because there is a separate piece of wood yeah. on the outside. So you're just kind of working it in there. So we're just gonna have to use our judgment on how much to put in. I mean, it's okay if it pushes all the way through. Oh yeah, yeah, just like it, a won't, hole down there. it won't hurt anything. So we just wanna push and push and push and just squeeze it way in there. All right, so the Kyle's got the first layer on there and he's kind of let it set and now he's smearing a second layer on top. So all the way back there, they're sitting up about us. 32nd of an inch this and now he's smearing it down. Dry, totally clear, so we shouldn't really see much of it once it's done. All right, Kyle, I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed, dude. Check this out, guys. You can barely even tell down here that there was a crack. Yeah, that epoxy know. blends in really well. He's also hitting a spot on the outside that he didn't like. His OCD was driving him crazy. Yep. Looks good, dude. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm sitting right in front of a brand new Ram TRX. This thing makes over 700 horsepower to the wheel, and we are giving it away to one of you guys. Every $5 you spend on Cletus McFarland.com, whether it's one of my t-shirts, a hat, a Cletus shirt, even these new Dixon flannels by, uh, that have the Cletus logo on them, literally anything you buy on the website. Every five bucks you spend gives you one entry to win this TRX, and then there's also a mini TRX that is two doors and it's gonna have a elephant engine. So we've, there's two epic trucks up for grabs, your choice on which one you're gonna take home and 20 grand cash. So if you go to cleavesmcfarland.com, there's a link in the description. Like I said, every five bucks you spend gets you one entry to win one of the trucks. So, um, you know, we've had a lot of failures recently with this boat. It was a big deal to bring it over. We put it in the water, it's got a hole in it. Let me show you what we've been doing. We've been working on this thing like nonstop. We got our slung up, which is kind of cool because this is how they keep them in Thailand. They pretty much just sling them up to rafters. And uh, this is it. This thing's 28 feet long. It's made out of teak. And then it has kind of like this varnish over it. It's almost like an epoxy or a varnish. I'm not really sure what it's called or what it is. It's all the same stuff to me, but it's shiny. And then we did the ocean grip on here. Dylan did this locally. So it kind of like smoothed out some of this stuff in here. Um, but here she is. This thing is incredible. We finally got the engine in as you guys saw in the video already. But <clears throat> David and his team built this cover for it. Dude, you know where the string's at for this thing? But this is a compound turbo setup on an Isuzu 4J. Um, it's running the stock computer as a, like a Isuzu D-Max truck over in Asia. And so they pulled it out, dressed it up, but then the guys, uh, Daniel Diesel, he put it back together once it came stateside. And it's got like pistons rods, cam, you know, I don't even honestly know what it's all been done to it. I've been told that it's like around 50 PSI in the compound setup. I would guess like five, 600 horsepower. I think that's shooting a little high personally, but I mean, it's enough that when you're driving this thing, it absolutely rattles your soul. Like it, it, it's my bug. But there's some upgrades we did on this thing since it came stateside. We did, it was just running on like a car battery. And so I switched it out with these excess power batteries. Uh, one of them's a powder, one of them's a battery and the other one's a super bank. And so this one, one the super bank only weighs like two or three pounds. It's crazy. And then this, this full size battery is obviously very heavy. But the idea is like, it's like a capacitor or something. I don't know, science, but it's the power of both, of two batteries, but it's really only one battery, I guess. I put an uh, on off switch, motion race works, catch can that I haven't plumbed yet. And then I redid the whole water pickup system, which was a lot of freaking work. If you look back here, these are the water pickups for cooling the engine and the intercooler. So water is force fed through these two inlets and then it goes up through the hole. And so this is all like motion race works and crimp fittings and their pass-throughs that you normally see in like race cars, but I put it on the boat. 
So once the water comes through the hole, it goes into this clear view filtration system right here, which is normally used in race cars for the oil. I hit a clear view, he helped me out, and so basically those pickups feed into there so that debris that's sitting in the water doesn't go through the engine, but it's got a filter that you can see through this, and you can see if there's any junk that's accumulated in there, and then it goes to a water pump. That water pump feeds to an air to water intercooler, and then the water mechanical pump that's on the engine to cool that. So completely water-cooled system. Uh, off of those off of those pickups and then fuel side there's technically three fuel pumps on this thing we have the two lift pumps and then the one mechanical pump that's sitting on the engine but before there was no filtration system and so the guys at vsc that do uh, filtration systems for like diesel pickup trucks hooked it up with a water separator and then a fuel filter as well so we've got that plumbed into this system and that goes up to the mechanical pump and feeds this whole deal so it's it's simple but it's complicated like i changed a lot and in hindsight i probably shouldn't have because it's just been a pain in the butt i, I mean it was running when i got it technically or when i left thailand and i came back the same but um i thought there was like kind of some room for improvement to make it americanized and then also kind of like throw in some local companies that i've worked with before to support their product so uh got the rudder installed this system here is to help turn the boat left and right. And then obviously we have a relay panel with like an emergency switch and everything so that if I fall off the boat, it kills everything. Uh, but yeah, so as of right now, like this is kind of how the boat sits, it's slung. We gotta pull it onto the trailer. So are you ready to do that, brother? Yeah. We got some work to do before we take this thing out on a rip today. Uh, the drive shaft, there's two drive shafts. I'm about to show them to you. One of them is kind of broken because we've been beating on it a little bit. And then the other one, we kind of have to make some adjustments so that it'll fit. It actually slides into the back of this transmission. This transmission does have four neutral and reverse. And there's an opening. It's a total pain in the butt process, which you're about to see us putting this in. The first thing we gotta do, we gotta get this thing on the trailer and then uh, get that drive shaft going. Oh, this is the trailer. And you guys are gonna... This is the trailer that David built. Absolutely gangster. And our buddy Daniel hooked it up and did a lot of fabrication on like the center flares and then here's the drive shaft these things these two drive shafts are 12 feet long check this thing out so it's got an inner shaft and an outer shaft and then like a, a steering rudder but uh as of right now this does not fit into the back of the transmission so we need to grind this thing down and test fit it before we go out all right apparently this is not good this is the same drive shaft that i was running over in thailand and there's some slop in the in the drive shaft there's like a rear bushing that needs to be custom made and it's uh, starting to eat away at the prop like it was sitting against the, I don't know. Apparently I shouldn't run it. I might, if the other one doesn't fit, we'll see. But we have to do some modifications for that one before it fit. So let's get the trailer underneath the boat, get it pulled over the shot, get some work on this thing so we can go for it. Oh my God. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. You're good. challenges of bringing this boat over and once we got it out of the crate and the engine on it was going to be how do we get it down the road right I mean we needed to figure out like a trailer situation in order to get this thing to the river or get it to the intercoastal. My name is David with Apogee Industries out here out of Venice Florida. Uh, what we do out here is we sell trailers we sell trailer parts and we fix trailers so this is a family business and it's literally a family business my family and I lived on this property for almost a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. Uh, my family went through living in a 400 square foot RV to make all this happen. And we finally were able to purchase a house and move the family over. But yes, it's literally a family thing. Then we find out we're the same age. We both moved our businesses here like at the same year and almost it's down to the month, right? And he's got a good big family and is very family oriented and so am I. And I was like, man, this is the kind of guy that I want to work with. 
What's different about Apogee uh, than other trailer places yeah. in the area is there's nothing that scares us that we will do. We'll do anything. As long as the money is there and it's worth our time and it's worth the customer's time and it fits their budget, we're gonna do it. There's nothing that we're gonna say no to. And then he's, he's sending me videos at like two or three o'clock in the morning working on this trailer. And it was just unbelievable to see this thing. You know, I thought I was gonna have to buy like some old pontoon boat trailer and like convert it to work for the river boat. And he instantly was custom making like the baddest trailer you could possibly get. The biggest challenge is how narrow the boat is um, and how long it is. So we had to make sure it is wide enough still to hit the road so narrow and so long. So we had to go a little bit wider on the trailer than you would normally see something for this. I mean, the boat's only 53 inches wide, I believe so. To begin with, we thought it's gonna be about 40 foot long. We were able to drop everything down to 33 feet total which is still pretty long for anything to be less than probably 65 inches wide. I feel like we're excelling and like the trailer game, we're kind of changing it a little bit. I mean, this guy will be here till two in the morning if that's what it takes to get something done. We could build basically anything from scratch and we know that if we take on the job, we're gonna get it done. It's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be right and done right from the first time. Man, we're the best. We're the best in town. His info is in the description below. You guys can follow him on Instagram or Facebook. He buys and builds some super cool stuff. Or if you're in the area and need service, hit him up because these guys go above and beyond. He'll literally stay up till three in the morning on a Saturday to fix a trailer. The guy's insane. Do you want me to hold your purse while you do that? Do you want to try and just like grind it down first and then put it in or you want to try and put it in first? We could just, uh, it doesn't take much, right? It won't go in if anything. So let's, let's try, put it in. This is definitely a two person job. I think you mentioned last time, not your wife and you. Not gonna happen. Is it even close? I mean, it's a quarter inch in. I swear, boats, man. There's always something wrong with them. Always. And it's always like right before you're going out for a big outing. Oh, perfect. Now we're talking. So uh, we, we went ahead and ground off the paint on the end. Hopefully that'll be enough to fit this drive shaft into that transmission. We're gonna go put it in, test it in the boat now. Oh, <laughs> took down the shop. Let's try this thing in. Yeah, it actually is working really good. Look at that. I know it's some of it's grease, but if we can clean it up a little bit. Go back in there. Uh oh. Oh, yep. There she is. Would you just look at it? You boys ready to go riverboat ripping? Yeah, I see that shot of the guy in the Thailand, the Philippines and shit. 
Quick. That's what this is. Quarter mile an hour. That's what this is. Quick. Come. Yeah, that's gonna have you scared as hell. This one came from Thailand. Yeah. My ain't kind of weight gets real bad though. Hard body would be pretty cold. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, that's cold. badass though. <laughs> seems a little bit of a process to get in the water. Obviously you gotta put the plug in so you don't fill full of water. But most importantly, you gotta put the drive shaft on. Now I've actually never ran this drive shaft. But what's really interesting about these drive shafts is they have a rudder on the bottom right here to keep it going straight. And there's also a rudder back here that's seared with this arm up here. So I'm getting this thing on installed now. It's kind of a two person job now that we got it in. Get to make sure this thing's straight up and down. And uh, now I'm gonna get these three bolts tightened down. And this is literally all that holds that thing on are these three little bolts. You gotta make sure they're super tight because the one time we didn't tighten them all the way and the drive shaft started spinning. Just gonna get this on and then she's ready to rip. Now this is the first time that we're actually gonna kind of like document us putting this thing on the water for all you guys. It's been a long road to get here. This process started over a year ago and I first got in touch with somebody about building one. It was literally last April. And then in uh, November is when we first drove it in Thailand. And now this is it. This is like, I would call this pretty much the maiden voyage. All right, time to launch this thing. We uh, we got the tail on, batteries on, plugs in. It's time to get this thing wet. started it yet. Oh, here's just so much easier to launch than mine. You think? Brian, Adrenaline Mega Truck, and Jamie. They're out here on their American John boat. And I'm on the Thailand diesel long tail, and we're gonna go rip these things in the intercoastal right now. This is saltwater intercoastal. There's literally other boats driving up and down right now. It's got a cold Dr. Pepper in my hand. It's time to rip this thing on United States waters.
25 to 30. Felt like I was doing 90. Dude, this thing's sketch. I'm not gonna lie, I'm sketched out by it. I'm like literally afraid of this thing. Ball by captain, take him out. use your knee to leverage the prop down into the water. Yeah. Otherwise, it's trying to skip on top of the water. <laughs> you can see there's a little planer on the bottom of it that tries yeah. to suck it. Showing Americans this style of vehicle that they've never seen before, and maybe never even seen before on social media, right? So it's cool to share different cultures and parts of the racing and boating world that may have never been seen before stateside to people all around us. Here's the trigger right here. Give it a couple bullets. Give it some throttle. It's not gonna go anywhere. All right, I thought I'm gonna make sure. Here, drive it up. There you go. All right, baby, here we go. There you go. What are your thoughts, man? Pure joy. I mean, this is amazing. <laughs> We're having a lot of fun with this thing, man. I, like, I literally brought it here for everyone else to enjoy. Like, I can't wait to take out my friends and family on this thing and tiki bar hop and go to sandbars. Like, that's what it's about, right? Is sharing your toys, not just hoarding them for yourself. It's, it's gonna a good be, thing uh, you didn't come here yesterday because probably you probably have a uh, hundred people try to get dude, on. Dude, I know. I need to bring it here on a Sunday because that's like the day to be in the KCP I know. tiki bar. Exactly it, right? Well. You hope you enjoyed it, man. I'm not. I, I, we'll have to go for a ride sometime. Listen, I'm going to text you to make sure the next time you get to take it out. I'm going to be Come on, man. Go on Let's do it. Let's do All it. Right. People talk about you because people are like, who's that guy? Who's that guy? <laughs> Whatever. That's what I hear I'm about serious. you, man. You That's know. what I hear about this guy. Don't listen All right. to me. I'll call that a solid first trip for the day. I think that uh, we'll call it quits for today. We'll grab a drink at the Tiki Bar and then maybe do some flying with Cleet tomorrow. Get the seaplane out, riverboat, do a little collab. I think that'd be sick. All right. Let's get a drink. See you tomorrow. video is an absolute success. We had Brian in his John boat, we had David in the Tritune, and we got some sick shots. I'm fired up for tomorrow. It's time to get this boat on the trailer, get her home for the night, get it dialed in a little bit. We got some tweaking to do, but I gotta say this drive shaft is a lot better than the other one. I don't know if you saw on that clip, but last time the drive shaft rotated like 90 degrees and it was just all out of whack, but we made sure to tighten the bolts really tight, like really strong this time, but uh, it performed really well. So we're gonna get this thing loaded up, get her home, and uh, have a sick day tomorrow. We need fuel too. We're like out of, out of fuel.
My foot slipped. What can I say? I'm So uh, right now we're driving over to the Freedom Factory. We're gonna put some diesel in it, and then we're gonna go over and drop this thing in the water. I'm so fired up. We got a big storm cloud coming though, and so it's screwing up our plans a little bit, but I love when this shit goes down like this. I'll show you this uh, this radar. There's this big cumulonimbus cloud forming over, the, over Venice right now, and you can actually see it right there. And that's headed our way. So all that, all that out there's rain, and it's headed towards us right now. And as you can imagine, seaplanes and boats with cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds do not mix well. <laughs> so that is the storm that you do not mess with. I mean, this storm probably goes anywhere from 30 to 50,000 feet above sea level. And we're at sea level right now. It's a huge cloud that makes a ton of lightning and rain. And during the summers in Florida, it is the worst time to be on the water or to be in the air. And I just got word that Cleet is gonna meet up with us in the seaplane and I can actually see him pulling it out right now. So we gotta get fuel in this boat and get it over to the ramp and get it in the water ASAP because this storm is headed right for us. So the gate's locked, which is not good because don't have that much fuel and we have this storm coming and I don't know the code so we're just gonna go with what fuel we've got and hope we don't run out which there's a strong possibility that we might run out of fuel in this thing. and running out of fuel on a diesel is not good if we run out of fuel in the middle of the bay since we don't have a chase boat then you and I are sitting in a rainstorm until someone comes and gets us <laughs> we're on our way to the boat ramp and our freaking cover almost just flew off so like the urgency of this situation is that we, this is literally our only time to film the boat with a seaplane and so we have to go to the lake right now before the storm otherwise it's going to be dark out we're not going to be able to do this so it's it's kind of like a now or never situation so we have to like rush to get to the boat ramp right now before we before we do any more filming. And so we can't get fuel. We're be trying to run a storm right now. It's pretty much a recipe for disaster, but as you guys know, we gotta do it for the contest. That's what we're about to do. Here's the lake right here. This is uh, near the track and she's looking beautiful out there. Look at this place, dude. I don't know why, but my heart is pounding right now. Anytime I take this boat out, I just like, it's a freaking process, man. Get all your nuts. Still lost my socket. Almost had a knuckle buster 9000. The difference with uh, running in like a lake versus an ocean is that we're gonna have a lot less boats, which is nice. The bad part is we have a lot more wind today. And wind is not our friend when we don't have a paddle, we don't have an anchor. So, plan is go out to a couple rips before the storm gets here. Once the storm gets here, pack her up, call it a day. I think it's really cool the long tail boat. You know, Parker went all the way over to get that puppy. And I worked on a similar project where I imported a expensive item from Venezuela, got a helicopter, and Parker and I are kind of working on these projects at the same time. But uh, Parker went and saw his. He drove his in the country it came from, and I thought that was, uh, that was neat to immerse himself in the culture. Then they really delved into, like, Parker going to get this boat in Thailand, and you know, the helicopter out of Venezuela, but I think it's fantastic that they are not just focusing on the United States because we do live in the full world. And sometimes as people in the United States, we only focus in the United States. So I think it's fantastic. They've looked outside to find um, deals or cool things to bring to their YouTube channels. He's been through trials and tribulations. The thing doesn't run, then it runs, then it doesn't. They built this cool trailer. I mean, Parker's hit this thing 
from a lot of really cool angles and that's why I'm excited to see him succeed with it. We made it before the storm. We're on the water. Had a couple of things I gotta figure out, but that's part of it. We got cleat right here in the seaplane. We're gonna do a little rip together. I cannot believe we literally just raced the Thailand boat against the seaplane. Like, dude, him taking off as we're taking off, like, that's just been a dream of mine forever. Like, two brothers just hanging out with, like, the coolest toys they can possibly buy with their money out ripping on a lake in the middle of Florida. I mean, does it get any better than that? I mean, come on. All right. So now that we've done that, I think I'm going to let my buddy David drive the boat. He doesn't know yet. So we're gonna get him on the boat and see if he can rip this thing. It's always really funny to see somebody drive it for the first time because it is, it's like a level nine out of 10 difficulty. It's like flying a helicopter. 
Hey, so if we call you guys, someone's got to come pick us up because we really don't have that much fuel. <laughs> you laugh, but... What were your first thoughts when you heard about the riverboat? Uh, <laughs> just, that's badass. <laughs> that's cool. Dude, if I can get in touch with this guy and hit the water with him on the boat, you made my day. All right, dude, you know what to do. Obviously, let off if you don't like where she's going. Yep. Yep, go. Lift it up. <laughs> All good. What do you want to do? You want to try and turn it around? Yeah. All right. It ain't easy, I'll tell you that. One thing about this boat is the maneuverability of it is so bad. Like, we're going straight for shore. And I mean, it literally takes like 100 yards to turn this thing around. It is no joke. Especially with some wind pushing us, not easy. How's it going over here, bud? It's going. I'm not used to working with rows, you know, so I... There's a steering wheel. You know. I think you got it. I think we're good. Keep doing what you're doing, like rowing it over. better than me. Dude, he's uh, he's a natural. So he is natural. I gotta do it a couple more times. Right? I, mean, I think you're just like the the way that you stand on it, like you get more leverage than I do. Is that JH in the airboat? In the airboat. <laughs> what up, man? What's going on? How's it running? It's running good. Hey, I heard if they buy some of your merch, they might want a TRX. Is that right? That's, that's the rumor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so if you buy any JH merch right now, what happens? Get uh, every five dollars spent, get you one entry to win your choice of a mini TRX or a full size one. Full size plus twenty thousand dollars cash. Twenty grand cash. That's insane. It's pretty nuts, dude. That's for badass. buying a T-shirt and a hat and sunglasses or stickers. What do you got here today? I don't know. You told me to drag my airboat to the lake. Yeah. So I said, all right, I'll drag it to the lake. Now what are we gonna do? I mean, I think an airboat looks better in the water than on a trailer. Yeah, yeah I'm just you know we're just chilling, we're checking <laughs> everything out, make sure everything's good. Is it good? It looks good to us. We do have a storm kind of moving our way. Yeah. So is your boat under 20 horsepower? Well, you see, that sign is for outboards, and that's an inboard. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you have that we actually shot? did check with FWC, and that law, like that rule is literally for outboard boats. And we're in IO apparently, right? I saw, an IO? Zero. I saw a 2 zero on mine. Yeah, I mean, the sticker says 2 zero. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't have a prop at all. I do, but it's up above the water, so I'm good. <laughs> Been talking to Parker for a long time, and he thinks he's the first guy in the United States with a tie long tail diesel boat. My uncle's brother's cousin out in Texas has two of them. Had them for 20 years. This guy's way behind the times right now. First, we pulled down here and said, shit, there's a plane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, we were just out here having a good old day, dude. Hell Normal yeah. Tuesday in Florida, right? I was about to say, what do you think of Tuesday at the fish camp? <laughs> <laughs> and you know that sign's only for, for outboards. Yeah. Since yeah. we're inboard, yeah. we're good. <laughs> I've been known to run something bigger out here myself. <laughs> <laughs>
So after that rip, I was telling you we were low on fuel. The gauge is literally not even showing anything on the tank. I mean, this tank's pretty small as it is, and I've literally only had to fill it once with like the amount of times I've started it to get it going. We've ran it like three or four times, and that's only burned one tank of fuel. This, this tank's probably no more than five gallons. But you can see on the gauge down here, there's literally no diesel in here. It's empty. So we had the perfect amount. I was worried about how much fuel we were gonna have. Also, we got a big issue here. As you can see, there's a ton of oil in the bottom of the boat. And that's because these blow-by lines off the front and off the top of the engine aren't hooked to anything but the bottom of the hole. I do have a catch can installed. I just still have to plumb it. So it's one of the things on the list to improve before we take it out again. Obviously, add a little bit of oil, add some fuel. But other than that, I mean, it's still pretty ready to rip. There's really nothing wrong with it. I do need to hook up like little things, like a little bit of wiring here and there. But... On that, how'd you guys think it ran? I think it was ripping pretty good. It sounded great, it looked great. Yeah, I like it. Run like your uncle. It's a diesel. My uncle's actually a little faster. He had the original. This is not really like an. This is not really like an original long tail tie boat. This is kind of a later model one. The originals, with the original diesel. They have it in Texas. We're like two or three in Texas. <laughs> way faster. Way faster and like way more original. Yes, yeah, way more original. <laughs> They did say that if I am going to do a high speed run in it to put another body up front so it doesn't flip over backwards, like maybe some sandbags. Because even when I'm planed out, like on the second step doing 30, I mean, it, the bow's the bow's pretty high up there. Like it's it's a freaking kite. All right, and then now we'll get your, your yeah. explanation of it. So we've got a couple cells out here. It's pretty normal for a Florida summer, but it's just still something you don't want to mess with. Like that's clearly rain right there. There's rain over here. We got it to the southwest and the southeast of us, and today the storms are kind of moving towards the north. Tomorrow they could be moving towards the south. It's literally different every day during the summer. So the boat's running good. We've had a good grip. We got some great shots. So I think we're gonna call it for the day, get some fuel in it, touch up some wiring, maybe run those catch can lines. And then we're gonna go to the sandbar on Sunday. So pretty stoked for that, because that's like a family oriented deal. Like we're gonna bring the elephant out and all of our friends and there's gonna be a ton of boats at the sandbar So a little bit different vibe than ripping up and down the intercoastal and like with an airboat and an airplane This would be like normal Florida boating. So I'm pretty excited to bring it out with my friends Pretty successful rip. We had, uh, we rushed out there. We couldn't get fuel. We had a storm coming. As soon as we got to the ramp, Cleet showed up with the plane. So we immediately dropped in so he wasn't waiting on us. I almost sank my truck. Like I literally heard the radiator fans slap in the water. No water in the cab though, so that's good. Other than my wet shorts. Went out and ripped. Jade showed up with the square body and his airboat and literally finish off the day with like no fuel on the fuel level indicator. So right now, we got the boat back on the trailer. We suffered a little bit of trailer damage and uh, we're gonna go back to the shop, assess, make sure everything looks good and then we're gonna go hook up to the TRX and do some rollers to promote the, the TRX giveaway because that thing's so sick. And uh, we'll throw in some clips of the mini truck. It's literally a TRX that they took, cut it in half, it made it a two-door and it's super sporty. It's way faster than the four-door truck because it's so much lighter. And they're putting a elephant in it, which is a thousand horsepower created in it. It's unbelievable. So anytime you buy something off the website, whether it be my shirt, cleat shirt, JH's, tuna malls, whoever, every five bucks you spend gets you one entry to win. Either one of the trucks, it's your pick if you win, and you get 20 grand cash no matter which truck you pick. So it's a pretty sick giveaway and it literally ends August 16th. So there's only about two weeks left for you to get something in order to enter the giveaway. All right, so uh, today is a super great success day. We avoided the rain. We didn't run out of fuel. We ripped the cleat, we ripped the JH. Uh, we got the boat stored away for the week because we are heading to Connecticut for Cletus and Cars and the New England 900, which I'm super pumped about. We're gonna be racing Crown Vicks, doing burnouts to the Hellcat. Once this video drops, this event will have already happened. And then as soon as we get back Sunday, we're going to the sandbar with our family and friends. So overall, epic day with the boat. The thing's just like running so strong. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today. Let's get this thing stored away 
and hit the intercoastal for Sunday. Howdy. You guys ready to rip? <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought the boat here in the water ready to go, buddy. I wasn't even going to attempt to do that. <laughs> I was like, like I'll just leave it here. I brought it up. That was a good look. All right, guys, we are out here day three on the intercoastal with the boat. Actually, day two, second time we've taken it out on the ocean. And we are going to launch the boat right now. We brought the elephant out today. That way we can go hit the sandbar and kind of do some shots running side by side and then go chill on the sandbar, have a couple drinks with our friends. There's actually a ton of boats out there right now. There's probably 100, 150 boats and we're at Jewfish Sandbar up in North Sarasota off of Anna Maria Island or Longboat Key. And so right now we're just getting tied up. I'm about to go jump out and grab the tie boat and get that thing launched. So we got to get the, the tail on, get it going, and then uh, have some fun today. So let's do it. So the ramp we're at is actually the same exact boat ramp that Whistle and Disa put his mega truck in the ocean at. And it's the same bridge that he went under with his truck. So the current is kind of ripping like it was in his video, but since we've got two boats with us today, we should be all right. Uh, first up, obviously get these straps off. Get the drive shaft in, and then we're ready to launch this thing. Never done this before. <laughs> <laughs> You've been a long boat. So you gotta kind of rotate it as it goes in. Go up and down. It's going. We're in, we're in. Top speed on that. They say it'll do 90. Pardon? They say it'll do 90. Really? <laughs> I got so lucky. <laughs> Not only did I fill it up with diesel, but I checked the oil on it. It wasn't even on the dipstick. Oh! <laughs> so we topped her off with oil. Topped her off with diesel. Should be ready to go. I think we're ready to back this thing in the water. Let's hope. Let's hope. Alrighty. There's a lot of oil sitting in the bottom of the boat, which is not great. Not great. Got to figure that one out. That wild. I'm curious how fast will that thing go? That's crazy. They say you haven't done it yet. Uh, it's worth trying once in a while. Zone, so we can't go fast, but just on the other side of the sandbar, you can. So we're gonna go by the sandbar at the boat, and then we're gonna go get up on plane and do a couple of rips before we hit the sandbar with all our friends. But so far, the boat's running really good. We put in the water and fired up right away. It was kind of sketchy getting out of there because the current was ripping and pushing us against the dock, and like the drive shaft just going underneath the dock wasn't good at all. So. Look at all these boats out here. A little bit more wavy than the lake, that's for sure. I don't really know how the current and the waves are gonna play into today, but it is a flat bottom boat, so we gotta keep that in mind that it definitely does not like the waves. Can you hear it? <laughs> this thing's so aggressive. I love it. Oh, look at how good the elephant looks. What a beast. It's crazy to think that Whistling Diesel drove his Monster Max truck underneath that bridge right there. And now here we are driving a long tail here. I mean, who would have thought? This area just like breeds YouTube content. Yeah. <laughs> so as I see it, 
been on Facebook. And it's like mid-afternoon, it's about 2 o'clock, it's like 95 degrees, it's like prime sandbar boating weather right now. What's that? of where all the merchandise for Cletus and myself and JH and you know Dr. Tuna Mall and all the other guys that are involved in this incredible area of Florida that we make amazing content out of and everybody's t-shirts and hats and stickers and keychains and Mr. Sam's tire and wheel cleaner I mean literally everything leaves right out of this building what's really cool about it is when they're filling orders they grab the skew it's scanned and then this thing lights up on where the product's at. And that way, when you order something, it's very accurate and efficient so that when it goes out the door, you're getting exactly what you ordered. So my merchandise, I've just released this new shirt that's relative to the boat. It's a bad day of boating, beats a good day at work. And on the front, it says Captain. Another product you can order is my toothbrush, which comes with two toothbrush heads and an aluminum CNC mill toothbrush handle that is made right here in America. These are, you can sign up for a subscription plan so you can get these once a month, once a quarter, or once a year, and the handle is guaranteed for life. So I've been using this toothbrush for over a year and a half, never changed out the handle one time. I know Lucas over here has been doing it as well. These things are freaking awesome. You will not be disappointed if you buy one of these toothbrushes. I mean, it's a 10 millimeter wrench on one end, and a toothbrush on the other. What kind of car guy wouldn't want a toothbrush like that? And 10 out of 10 dentists recommend this. I've never met a dentist that doesn't recommend this toothbrush. Every five bucks you spend gets you one entry to win the mini TRX or the full size TRX and $20,000 cash. So get on CletusMcFarland.com and get you some merch, whether it's for me or him, one of his guys, JH, anybody, so that you can take them the truck and the cash and experience it with your fam wearing your new merch. settle down for a second. How fast are we going to go, Parker? Um, wide open. Just a lot of
the bar on here started rotating. This thing, uh, this, this handle right here is spinning and pulled the throttle in. See how this came loose? So what happened is this handle here that you hold on to started rotating. The bolts that hold on to it kind of came loose started rotating and pulling the throttle, so I was getting a hang throttle. And we shut it off, and now we have a ton of oil in the bottom of the boat. I think that's just blow by, or I think it's just overfilled. It's just clean oil, man, that's a lot of it. So, make sure the oil pan is all seated, right? It's gotta be an oil pan leak, right? It's dripping off the oil pan. Is it? Yeah, it's all right. In the back. We're only in about two feet of water right here, too. I wonder if we can, I think we can play now this though. Oh yeah, of course. You just keep it shallow. Got plenty of water. I mean, this thing doesn't draw anything, it's like six, eight inches. I think we should turn around or meet these guys over here. Probably meet them over here. Worst case scenario, they can tow us back. Yep. Shoo! That'll get the heart pumping. How about rolling past that sandbar? <laughs> Dude, the, thing, the thing is torquey, man. Isn't it? I just want to kind oh, of just lay into it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's like, all right. <laughs> I want more. Uh, yeah, I felt like there was still a lot to give. Oh, he wasn't even. <sighs> Dude, honestly, I'm afraid of this thing. Like, it just. It's just going to take seat time. It totally, totally is going to take seat time. All right, yeah. let's get her over. Uh, stops leaking that's that's a bad sign you know right. you know what they say about a diesel if it's leaking it's got oil okay all right well should we go rip this thing a little bit i think we should check the oil first yep yeah. it's got right. oil it's got oil Luckily, diesels hold a little bit of oil. The good thing about a diesel is you can run it out of oil. <laughs> you can run it on oil. All right, so what do you say we fire this thing up and Kyle, you drive it and we'll go back to the sandbar and hang out for a bit? Sounds good, man. Time for everything. Since Kyle helps us fix the uh, crack in the hole, obviously he gets to drive the boat.
I know a bag for the fire responsibility in our ears. <laughs> so, Woo! Kyle is ripping it. Serious torque. And man. it started breaking up, so it's clearly his fault. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like it's hitting on three cylinders though instead of four, wouldn't you say? It, it's exactly what it sounds like. But the oil pressure seems like it's uh, like it's fine. So we must have fouled out a spark plug. Fouled <laughs> <laughs> something out. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It's like trying to fucking tame a, a bull. <laughs> Pretty strong there for a second. Yeah. Looks like we're floating right into these mangroves and the engine won't start. It was running really strong right there, wasn't it though? <laughs> we were going full pull. Right? We keep a spare uh, oar on here. And a spare something. A spare engine. It almost sounds like it's down on voltage, like the This isn't good. Hey, uh, I guess I'll try and tie up to that uh, intercoastal sign there because we're we're down. Shoot, man, this thing was running so good right before it let go. It's got to be just like a sensor or something because like it's still cranking over and I can hear the compression. Although on the starter, I'm not seeing any oil pressure, which usually you don't see any oil pressure on a starter anyways, I would hope. But we got a lot of oil on the bottom of the boat. It's not looking good might have blown it up I don't know we got to get this thing somewhere I can check it out because right now we're literally floating in the intercoastal <laughs> with a boat that doesn't run so when we were coming back over these flats we were running next to the sandbar and I kind of let her eat a little bit and she was running really strong like probably the strongest I've ever felt it and I have a bad feeling that like sometimes these boats run their hardest right before they let go and I'm hoping that the engines okay I'm thinking that it might be a sensor or something like that but uh We've got these huge boats going by throwing a ton of wake, which isn't good. Look at this. These waves are literally as tall as the boat. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to start working on this boat a little bit, see if I can't figure out what's going on. With it. it might just be super hot, dude. She was running really good till she wasn't. It was running really strong till it wasn't. I don't know. I know. It's got oil. Bad day of work. It's a good day of work. 
Bad day boat beats a good day at work, isn't that right? Oh man. I don't know, this almost kind of feels like work right now. All right, hey, we're gonna throw you a line. I don't know if you want to tow us over the sandbar or back to the dock. Might as well take it to the sandbar for a little bit, see if it'll uh, cool off. So we'll take it over the sandbar, let it cool down a little bit. It might just be overheating. We're not getting enough water to this thing to cool it down. I mean, we've been running it pretty hard for the past like 30 minutes. So we're gonna tie the Thailand boat up to the yellow fin tow it over to the Jewfish sandbar, hang out for a little bit, grab a couple drinks, let the engine cool down, see if we can't get this thing started up and diagnose it. Hey, what, Chad, give her the rope. Tie that off to a cleat. Obviously go really slow. Especially when you turn us around. Yeah, that works. That works. That's okay, we're good. Now just tell him you go forward, and then we're gonna and go nice and easy, and we're gonna whip the bow around. You go ahead, nice. bump it in gear, Will. Yeah. Just keep my bow off the side of the boat. Take off that way. Nice and slow. Just kind of give it bumping in and out of gear. Go ahead, Will. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. It, yeah, we're not gonna be going fast. That's it. Okay. All right, neutral. I'm gonna hold on to this. This boat's really close to us and we don't wanna make any contact with this one and the yellow fin because this thing is made out of wood. It has like metal trim and it will gouge into the gel coat of the yellow fin, which would be a really bad day. Would it still be a good day at work? It'd still be a good day at work. Chad, just tie it around your neck. So right now we got a rope going from the back of the cleat, the cleat on the back of the elephant. And Kyle, are you holding on to it or is it tied off? All right. This is kind of like a walk of shame, I feel like. At least we had fun ripping it. <laughs> We're definitely the only broken down tie boat out here. I have a feeling that it's something to do with the cooling or a sensor came unplugged. That would be the best case scenario if like just a sensor came unplugged or it was too hot or not getting enough fuel. We'll kind of go through it, but I've got a bad feeling because there's so much oil on the bottom of this thing that I thought was blow by, but I think we've got an oil pan leak we got to deal with. Uh, we got to plumb the, the catch can. We got to check to see if there's anything unplugged. Uh, but when I turn it over, it sounds like the compression, everything's all hitting right, but you know, we can't really tell until we get it back into a compression test if we can't figure it out at the sandbar, let it cool down first. But I'll tell you what, those last few seconds before it let go, this thing was on an absolute rip. I don't know. It seems to want to turn over, but it doesn't seem to want to fire, so. I felt the, the computer seems super hot in that box. It could be just everything's too hot right now. We almost did. <laughs> broke it. Son of a bitch. Next time. I broke it, dude. Next time. Next time. Dude, it was on a rip that last few seconds, though. Yeah. Phew. I felt like I caught it. Getting this thing on the trailer is really tricky because we have current ripping right now. Like the water's in Sarasota Bay and it's leaving going underneath the bridge. So we're gonna be up here, which means that the current's gonna be dragging us into the bridge as we're trying to load up. Not only that, but the ramp's pretty steep. So we'll, since there's no winch on the front, one guy has to kind of hold it in position while the other guy's pulling it out of the water. It's just like a, it's gonna be a, a shit show, you'll see. Well, I think I, I would call that like a, Half success, right?
I don't think it's looking good, I'll tell you that. It did not sound normal when it was like free spooling like that. It almost sounds like it's down on compression or something. Which would be a no bueno situation. It would require a full engine rebuild. But it is what it is. I mean, that was a sick rip while it lasted. I really wanted to come back to the sandbar just Wop, 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 wop. Pull up on a group of people. Yeah, like smoke out some girls. You're married. Smoke out some girls. Let's go. Slow, slow, slow. All right. not looking good for the town riverboat. We have driven it about three or four times and as you can see we have an enormous amount of oil on the bottom of the boat. Uh, she was running really strong until she wasn't and uh, it kind of sucks. We were headed back to the sandbar and I think it still got some oil pressure when I crank it over on the starter but I really just need to go home and probably pull the oil pan, reseal it all, put some oil in it, try and turn it over, let it cool down. There's two main water lines going to this thing. There's one that goes to an air water intercooler and there's one that goes to cool the engine. And the one for the engine is the only one getting water. So that just means my intake air temps are like super high, way higher than they should be. So I need to change out this uh, fuel log down here to like a Y splitter instead after the water pump. But, uh, oh, the clear view is working really good. We got a bunch of grass in there. So I'm gonna have to pull that apart. But I don't know. I think it was a successful day, wasn't it? Chad? Kyle? Out and back in one piece. So yeah, out and back in one piece, and I got like Kyle drive. Chad, I don't know. That was fun. Drive, That's like a bucket list check off. For me. The keys for What's your first impression, way? though? Because you've driven a lot of fast boats. Right? I have. Uh, it's very difficult. Yeah. You got to have some serious grunt to hold on to the thing and keep it under control. It's not as easy as it looks. So he didn't warn me about that. <laughs> it's like a It's like a balancing act but it's pretty cool. It's like trying to get the prop in the perfect spot, like yeah. not too far out of the water, but not too far in. It's, it's just one of those ride. things that takes seat time, you could tell, and then once you you know drive it enough, it'll get like second nature, like oh. anything else. You had a pretty good pull at one point. I know. I will say after some seat time, like my ability to drive this thing has definitely gotten better, like Kyle said, but I think given a couple more hours on it, we should be able to rip it a lot harder. And no, we haven't done like a top speed run at it, and everybody to ask me how fast it is, I've been told it'll do 90 miles an hour. Will I ever go that fast? Maybe one day, but as far as like getting up to speed with it, we're gonna take our time and do it right and work through all the bugs like yep. we know we're gonna run into. And that's just part of it. That's Slow boating. And methodical. That's boating, right? All right, y'all, that wraps it up for three epic days of shooting at the Longtail Riverboat. Unfortunately, it ended with a catastrophic failure that we're gonna have to dive into, but we've got some epic plans for this thing. So if you haven't already, hit that sub button. We got tons more content headed your way including an HOA battle update, more long tail riverboat action, and tons more to come.